To remain updated with the latest business news, click on the bell icon. Yeah, hello everyone. We have with us Ms. Vibha Padalkar, CEO of HDFC Life. Thanks a lot, ma'am, for joining us. Uh, just a couple of queries. Uh, how do you see uh, India Inc. working towards uh, uh, creating a more inclusive uh, workplace for in India? It is increasingly becoming apparent uh, that equal representation in boards as well as senior management and middle management makes a lot of economic sense. Because if it is only gratuitous, it's not sustainable. But when it starts making business sense, because half our customers are also women, so how do we understand them unless we have representation in our management teams, in our mid-management teams? Also, a lot of companies, especially the slightly older companies, uh, are becoming increasingly aware of the dropping out of the pipeline. The younger companies, fortunately, are attracting a lot of young female talent question is can we retain it so there needs to be a lot of focus to ensure that we don't have leakages but with programs like this the awareness levels do increase but we still have some ground to cover but would it be right in saying in, when it comes to things like gender diversity inclusiveness there has been some amount of progress made in in, in india and, and if yes what are the two three key progress or elements that you have seen in the last few years one very evidently is because of the Chain in Companies Act, wherein there's mandated to have uh, female representation and now female independent directors also for listed companies. I don't like representation, but we have to start somewhere. What's starting to happen is that even at boards, uh, it is becoming apparent that uh, having a different point of view uh, makes it a very well-rounded uh, guidance to the management team. So that's number one. Number two is a lot of companies are running uh, diversity and inclusion programs, um, and so the awareness levels. And number three is the entire ESG agenda. ESG is now no longer just a CSR. It is the entire gamut uh, in terms of uh, looking at governance, looking at uh, all aspects of it. So, uh, would you agree that Thank there has so been some amount of progress when it comes to gender diversity or inclusion uh, in terms of uh, Indian workplaces? And if yes, what are the two, three key elements of progress that you have seen in the last few years? Definitely. The first one is uh, the change that has been made in the Companies Act, uh, mandating representation on boards. And now they've gone even further to have uh, even an independent, female independent director on the board. We have to start somewhere and eventually it will start becoming apparent. It already has in a lot of well-run corporates that the value and the different perspectives that uh, women board members bring to the table. Second is a lot of DNI initiatives that are run by corporates to try and reduce the biases that exist. Um, also at, at homes, um, in, uh, you know, male members are becoming increasingly um, uh, conscious of, of the fact that there is talent, there is there are aspirations apart from just being a mother or a sister or a daughter or a wife. Um, so that's second. And third is the entire um, movement towards ESG. Very important, there are ESG focused funds, HDFC Life has one such fund. Uh, and so it's no longer just a CSR program, but it's becoming very important. What does an organization do, do equally on climate change and equally in terms of uh, inclusiveness? So these three aspects, I think, are very concrete steps uh, in the direction of having uh, gender neutrality. You think that women still have to face gender bias uh, in the boardrooms or in, or in the workplaces on a daily basis? It is a yes and a no. Uh, it is also uh, prevalent, but it is really up to the woman and her male colleagues to ensure that there is a fair bit of, you know, people take, uh, leave the gender out of the boardroom or the meeting room. Uh, and really it is the thought that counts rather than the uh, appearance of the individual. Uh, but yes, unfortunately, uh, it still exists. Uh, there are biases, not just with gender, but all kinds of diversity. And we have to consciously work towards eliminating that. You are heading one of the largest private sector insurance companies. What are your views on the level of uh, penetration of insurance in India? Do you think it is underpenetrated? And if yes, what are the two, three key things that we need to en enhance the penetration level? We certainly can do a lot better uh, because when you look at um, just in terms of the protection gap, so there's a protection gap today of 83%. Uh, when you look at overall underpenetration and when you split it into different socioeconomic strata, it's even more so. Um, so answer is yes. Uh, we are making strides. The sector is growing. If you were to look at over the last five years, 
but a lot more can be done to attract people into especially securing their lives on a long term basis has the pandemic over the last couple of years increased the awareness of insurance in the country definitely um, uh, undoubtedly so no longer are people asking why do i need insurance which sometimes used to be asked before the pandemic now it's more in uh, more constructive thought process that how much do i need do i need to cover my spouse and myself uh, and so on what variant so this is a positive development um, i do joke to say we shouldn't uh, miss or lose a good pandemic we could not have avoided it but at least we should have learnings from it and i am cautiously optimistic that the need for insurance at least is no longer doubted just one final question uh, uh, would it be right in saying that insurance is still a one size fits all product do you think that we have enough women focused insurance products and um, if no if not what can be done on that context So at HDFC Life, we were uh, the first ones to launch a smart woman plan, and more can be done. For example, female-related illnesses, um, sp- uh, you know, uh, specific cancer, for example, uh, or some other complications uh, at delivery time. Um, also, in terms of increasingly, women might choose to be single, or circumstances make them single. So how do they manage for themselves and their um, dependents? Uh, those sorts of products. can certainly be uh, relevant but i think the primary uh, need is lesser of the product but for the woman to be part of the financial decision making of a family so when a family sits around the dining table the woman has to be actively in, involved today that's n- not necessarily the case uh, and that needs to happen products can be secondary thanks a lot for speaking to us ma'am thanks a lot thanks a lot If you like the video do like comment share and subscribe